In Athen Rye, at this stage, in the last few years, very few years, two magnificent new schools have been built, secondary schools. I mean, they really are gorgeous. They're beautiful buildings, far superior uh, to anything, you know, that was the government were building in the past in terms of schools. And architecturally beautiful to look at. Lovely buildings. They've cost millions, understandably, as you'd expect. I think a third will be built, smaller one, uh, shortly. It's a remarkable investment in education. It's in a town in a crucial it's in a crucial place just outside Galway. It's on two motorways, it's on the rail. So I suppose it's a good place to invest. And the schools in Athen Rye are very good. One is Catholic and the other is a state school. The first thing I'd say is that nothing beats a purpose built school, and that's true. I mean it's 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 just it's lovely to have that. It's absolutely lovely to have that. The next thing I'm going to say you might think is very impractical. If you have the right teachers, now these schools have wonderful teachers, but if you let's say you have the right teachers, you can conduct a school in a hayshed. Everything centres in on the teachers. That's the truth. That's the truth. I mean everything in terms of the of the onus, the burden of what has to be done in that school. Very much. The principal's a very difficult job. I, I did that job for a while. It's a difficult job. It's a great job, but it's a very difficult job. But the core work of the school is done by the teacher at the coalface. In the classroom with the, after the door is shut and the teacher is there, maybe with a special needs assistant, and gets on with it. I suppose I'm just looking down the line and I'm wondering, well, what if we get pushed out of all the schools? You know, this is what we're talking about in Ireland at the moment. Like, what if we, these wonderful schools, beautiful buildings, what, what if none of, none of that was coming to us? Uh, what if we ended up pretty much back where we were 200 years ago, pretty much on the back alleys, when no papist church could be built on the King's Highway? What if we ended up back under a hedge? I don't know if you're familiar with that term. Uh, the hedge school master, hedge schools, were a feature of Irish instruction back about the end of the 18th century, I think, and on into maybe three quarters way into the 19th century. From the 1850s on, you had a state system of primary education gradually becoming established. And a lot of hedge schools weren't actually under hedges. They might have been in a shed, for instance, or in a barn. But some of them were, literally in the summer months, they were outdoors beside a hedge, you know, from which we get the term a hedge school, hedge school master. And what did they teach in these schools? Well, they taught arithmetic, as you'd expect, but they also taught Greek and they taught Latin, which were considered indispensable parts of uh, an education at the time. The classics of the the great civilizations that that had given birth to, to modern Europe, as it then was. This is the question I want to ask you. <clears throat> Would it be, I ask, the end of the world as we know it, if we were to end up back under a hedge? Could you be comfortable under a hedge? A good hedge, of course. Yeah. Well appointed hedge. I think we might be going there. That's not aimed at any person or it's not aimed at any institution. I'm just I'm just I'm like Gypsy Rose here at the fair. I'm peering into my crystal ball. And I have to say to you that I see hedge coming. I see a lot of hedge. Native Irish trees, of course. 
we're very eco-friendly. Let me tell you something, my friends. We'd be as well to start getting eco-friendly because we are going to start uh, end up very much out in the eco. <laughs> we're going, we're going to end up uh, out out in the fresh air bef- uh, before this is done. I just want you to start thinking about this if you're not thinking about it already. Now, I imagine some excellent Catholic schools which have lovely facilities will come back at me red faced with anger and say, we do all this work and you carry on like this. Hold your horses. It's not that I don't respect that work I do. And it's certainly not that I don't like comfort and don't envy you your beautiful buildings. I do. They're magnificent. And God give you the help to enjoy them. But as they say, well, where soon tear? (sighs) Look at the bigger picture. This is bigger than any of us. We don't belong anymore. We're being tolerated in those schools. We're being very grudgingly given the money we need occasionally to build new Catholic schools. Because it's still not politically expedient to get shot of us. But in terms of this world, we're yesterday's people. Now, we have a few consolations. Uh, The 2000 years of Christianity and all of eternity before us and a few similar little things. But if you put that aside and you just sit down in this life where most of us are, it doesn't look good for the church. Now that's fine. We've seen worse. But are we getting our heads around the idea that small is beautiful? Was it Schumacher that said that about small business? Are we getting our heads around the fact that we are now a tiny minority in this country? playing a way above our weight. Are, are, are we coming to understand that we may have to focus in terms of passing on our faith and, and passing on our faith as an intellectual as well as a spiritual tradition? Intellectual and spiritual anywhere, indivisible for us. It may be most economical, make the most sense spiritually, psychologically, humanly to simply invest in teachers rather than in institutions or facilities. And that actually it'll be wandering teachers, wandering uh, master tradesmen, as it were, and women who will be passing on the faith now in the intellectual sense. Shouldn't we be looking, for instance, at the training and the high training of operatives, of church agents, again in the academic, intellectual, spiritual sense? Now, you may well say back to me, well, isn't that the priests? Well, you're dead right about that for a start, because priests are far too good at dodging into committees. New men must be turning in his grave at us sometimes. And priests are supposed to lead. But lay people lead in their own province. And lay people lead in the church too in different ways. The priests are the leaders of the church overall. But lay people, um, for instance, lay teachers are leaders. All teachers are leaders. Shouldn't we be thinking people rather than facilities? People rather than institutions? Shouldn't we be getting lighter on our feet and becoming more itinerant about this? Becoming a little more nomadic in our organisation. Bit of a travelling shop. Now I'm just going to leave this with you. I am just coming before you in praise of hedges. I want you to think hedge. I want you to imagine yourself sitting under said hedge. I want to imagine yourself teaching under said hedge. I want you maybe to put Babylon behind you and to begin the long, slow trek back up to a ruined Jerusalem.
in the mountains, where the temple is waiting to be rebuilt. You're not going to do that by getting too fancy about it. Our days in Babylon are numbered. It is time to go up. God bless you. God keep you. Dies Maria Galer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>